In the previous chapter we created a model with 1024 modifiable faces. Now we will create the same model with only 64 faces and two additional subdivision levels. And finally, I proceed with introducing the remaining UV shape creation parameters. I reset the values of U and V back to their default settings. And then I increase the number of subdivision levels by 2. We see some interesting effects. First, the Sculpt map has again increased to 64 times 64 pixels, which is actually the same size as we had before when we used 32 U faces, 32 V faces and 0 subdivision levels. Second, the number of displayed faces is still 8 times 8. Third, the object has become smooth, although apparently its face count seems to be 64. We can see better what happens when we turn off smooth shading. Now we can see that each face contains 4 times 4 sub-faces, which are all following their parent face. So, whenever you move one single face or even one single vertex of the mesh, now the subdivided faces will follow and keep the surface smooth. This behavior has been implemented with the subdivision surface modifier. You can find the modifier in the object modifier section of the properties window. This modifier is a standard tool coming with Blender. Take another look what happens when we change the subdivision level. You see that the modifier disappears when the subdivision level is set to zero. Primstar 2 is aware of all of this, and it will take care that all subfaces will eventually be added to the final scout map. We will get back to this when we examine in more detail how Primstar 2 finally creates the sculpt map. We also can change the subdivision type. This defines in which way the base object gets subdivided. By default, the type is set to Ketmel Clark. This gives a smooth subdivision. And when switching to the type simple, then the parent face will be subdivided without changing its shape. In this case, you cannot see the subdivided faces, but they are still there. We also support the multi-raise modifier. But due to the specific implementation of this modifier in Blender 2.6, it is currently not usable for sculpted prims. Let us now turn our attention towards the two parameters, Distribute and Center. With these parameters, you can configure non-uniform face densities. I select front view, and I switch to the orthographic view, because there you can better see what goes on. By changing the center parameter, you move the edge loop in the center of the object along the z-axis, and thus you create different face densities on both sides of the edge loop. And by changing the parameter distribute, you will push away the edge loops from the center, or concentrate them around it. And here is a way how you can concentrate the faces at one side of the sphere by modifying the parameters for you. Now let's proceed to add texture map. If you want to create textures with Blender, then you should never reuse the Sculpt UV map for this task for two reasons. First, the Sculpt map should remain intact all the time. You do not want to override it with your texture data. Second, the Sculpt map is very small, typically of size 64 times 64 pixels. The size of your texture is most probably much bigger. So instead of reusing the Sculpt UV map, it is much better to add a separate UV map just for texturing purpose. This will effectively separate your sculpt map creation from your texture creation. Of course, you can add another UV map at any time, but we already provide the option to set it right away in the operator panel. This has a few advantages. First, the UV map is automatically named Texture Map. And when Primstar exports your objects, it will look for a UV map of this name, and export the texture, along with the Sculpty. 
Second, it is an exact copy of the Sculpt UV map. So you can use the texture map to create your texture, while you can be sure that it will match your Sculpty. Furthermore, when you create a texture map from the operator panel, it will automatically become the active UV map. We have chosen to do it like this because you should never have to bother with the Sculpt map anyways. Primstar always uses the Sculpt UV map to create the Sculpt map, regardless whether it is active or not, and you will probably want to concentrate on the texture making anyways. Therefore, setting the texture map of the active UV map should match most usage scenarios. Please remind that Primstar will never assign a new image to the texture map by itself. So you will always have to add your own target image by hand. You can do this by selecting the entire object in edit mode. Advance to the image editor, then select, image, new image. We are almost finished by now. I will cover the two remaining options, rotate, and align to view in the next version of this tutorial. Please refer to the Primstar reference guide for more information. I have one last general but very important remark. The UV shapes provided by Primstar 2 are not limited to the creation of sculpted frames, but can also be used to create standard meshes. And since sculpt maps are not at all needed to create standard meshes, you can explicitly disable the creation of the sculpt map. However you still get a UV map, but all constraints for sculpted prims have been disabled and you can directly use it for texturing. For example, you can specify as many U-faces or V-faces as you like, and the UV map always keeps regular. We are now finished with the Primstar creation panel. I will not cover modeling in this video, but I will immediately proceed to the Sculpt Myth Generator. If you want, you can check out my modeling tutorials for sculpted prints and meshes on the Machini Matrix website. See you later!